So morning, it is, um, what day is it today? Saturday, I've just been filming a plot tour for this afternoon to go out. Um, but there's not really much else we can do up here because it is so cold. And um, yeah, so we're hiding in the shed. We're gonna have a hot chocolate. And that's basically what we've come up for. So um, the ground's completely frozen, which makes it a bit tricky to do anything really. And uh, I've got to put those beds together around the bottom of the arches, but I don't really fancy using a drill in this weather <laughs> the battery will just die instantly anyway but um yeah so i think we're just going to go home and i'm going to go and sow some celery and celeriac because just walking around the plot tour today the stuff has really suffered in the cold i don't remember it ever being this cold and stuff's really suffered but the celery and the celeriac um are looking like they've been sat on by an elephant so <laughs> so yeah i'm just thinking right i'm going to go home and sow some more of that so, yeah, cheers. cheers. <laughs> oh no, I've got the hiccups. <laughs> oh. Okay, time to sow some celery and celeriac. Uh, last couple of years, I've sown my celeriac in like at the end of March and uh, I always get quite good celeriac but it's always very very tiny and somebody I know who always grows excellent celeriac told me that they sow theirs in January so I'm a bit late for that but I think it's still worth having a go now so hopefully I'm still going to be like what a month and a half earlier than I was last year and then next year maybe I can actually get them in in January. celery we're doing hadrian this year we did tango last year and that was the first time i'd ever grown celery so i don't know whether it was a good variety or not good variety but we will be able to compare when this lot comes up so this compost is really really damp already because it's been sat outside but look how tiny the celery seed is so you want to already water your compost because if you water this afterwards it's just going to wash your seed all over the place and you don't want to cover the seed not really or if you're going to cover them just with like the tiniest dusting of soil so yeah I'm just pushing them down into this already damp compost and they should be fine the celeriac that I'm doing is the same variety that I did last year it's called monarch and you can see, I mean, they're so closely related, but this has got exactly the same looking like seed. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. Just scatter across the top and leave it.
I'm gonna come in here because although it is warmer than yesterday, I have to admit, it's still pretty cold out there and the wind's blowing so you probably couldn't hear anything I was trying to say then. Let me just put you down here. Okay, so it is too cold really to do anything and I've got really sore hands at the moment. So I really don't wanna get them wet and um, expose them to too much cold, to be honest, which is a bit difficult up here, seems to it's freezing. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to have a look at doing a bit of planning because I'm going to go as soon as I've sorted the chickens out. That's what we're up here for, you know, sort the water and make sure they're OK. Um, I'm going to just have a bit of a wander around, take note of where I've got everything now. And then this afternoon, I'm going to get really warm inside and kind of work out where everything was last year. And I know I've spoken a little bit about um, crop rotation previously. We don't... Um, we don't do a lot of crop. It's not like we are on a, like a real big schedule, but we tend to move stuff around the allotment anyway, just because it's nice for a change. And we just sort of shunt things around. We've got some beds which are kind of specifically for some things because they're either like more shaded or they get more sun or whatever. And then we kind of got things which generally specifically go into them. But overall we do shunt stuff around a bit. And this year, we're going to be moving some things, but some of the stuff is ta being taken out of the kind of the circulation. So things like the potatoes, because we're going to be growing the potatoes in sacks this year instead of into the ground. And also, obviously, you've seen me put the new bean arches up. So that will be freeing up some space for uh, where we would have had a couple of bean frames in the beds. That's freeing up a bit of space for that. And what we'll also have at the bottom, because I'm going to make the boxes at the bottom of the... Sorry about my sinister gloves. They're a little bit... Um, they're a bit kind of strangler in the dark, aren't they? Sorry about that. Um, the... Yeah, so the beds that are going to be underneath those arches, it's not going to run the whole length of the bed because we've got a bit of problem on that edge for weeds coming under our fence. So the reason that I've made the path wider there is so that we can just strim and keep them really low and not kind of worry about them. So I don't want to then make a bed all the way along, but I do want to make these kind of individual beds, which means we're going to have a little bit of space around that area, which we haven't had before. It's probably going to be flowers, to be honest, rather than uh, vegetables. But yeah, basically, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do a bit of filming. And then when I'm back at the house, I'm going to have a look at where everything was in the summer, do a bit of plotting and planning because the layout has changed slightly from last year we've got a couple of extra beds and we've got a couple of extra compost bins and that kind of thing so i'm just going to kind of update the plot map and yeah so i'm going to go out there and do that now and i will see you at home in the warm Okay, we're home, we're warm, which is a massive upgrade to how it was in the shed. But what I'm gonna be doing is upgrading my plot map because the one I've got at the moment was drawn about 18 months ago and things are really out of date. I've moved so much in the last 18 months. I've moved the fruit cage, we have built polytunnel, put the netting shed in, we've got the cold frame and I've built a whole load of new beds and put the arches in and all that kind of stuff. So things has really, really changed around and trying to work off my old map just isn't working. I've got like an intermediary stage one, which I drew on Excel, which is really just bog standard Excel drawing, um, but that's kind of halfway along. So I've got the fruit cage moved on there, but nothing else. So this isn't how I'm gonna be doing my plot map today, but if anybody's interested in how to use Excel to map out their plot, let me know and I'll do like a, you know, little snippet Saturday video on how to do it. But what I'm doing today is I'm going to be using Google Earth. So previously I've used um, the satellite 
version of Google Maps, you know, when you just go onto Maps and then you put satellite over the top, zoom right in on the allotment and take a screenshot and then kind of trace off that. Works pretty well, but there's two problems with it. Firstly, the resolution isn't that great. So it's absolutely fine for doing large scale stuff, for example, like three years ago now, the council had kind of lost track of where all the borders were for our allotments on our whole site. And so I spent a couple of days kind of mapping the entire site and kind of and getting all the borders and the layout of our whole site done for the council, which worked really well on that scale. But when you're kind of scaling down onto an individual allotment and you've got the beds, so so each one of our beds is two metres 40 by one metre 20. So they're actually not enormous. And going on the satellite images, it's quite tricky to pick them out, but it did really help with the layout because when you're just trying to do it from memory, you're getting things kind of messed up and we've got quite a long narrow plot and when you're kind of going from one end and then you find out you've got all the right number of beds but then you've got no room for your fig tree or whatever it doesn't really work we've also got the added problem that along one side of our plot is really quite well established trees when you're on the plot it's not too much of a problem like they're quite a distance away but most of the pictures for the satellite imagery were taken in summer of that area which means that half of our plot is actually covered by the tree canopy and the photographs not so handy However, the new Google Earth 3D is unbelievable. So it's just basically turned the allotment into a computer game landscape. And I'm going to go on there now and show you because um, it's quite astounding, really. OK, so I'm just going to scan in. This is the whole site and ours is this one just on the end right here isn't that amazing i just think it's incredible like if you compare that to this is what the old satellite imagery used to be from the uh just google maps i mean you can see where the beds are but it's just it's just not comparable really compared to this amazingness i feel like i should be off like looking for quests So to be honest, the resolution on that and everything is so good. I could just use that as my plot map. Like I don't really, really need to do anything else. But the reason that a illustration or a diagram is so much more effective than a photograph of something is just because you can really identify the key information in the photograph or the diagram that you really want to display. So rather than kind of the grass and the rhubarb and all that kind of stuff, I can just map out the edges and it's really super clear. So what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of this just straight from above and I'm going to go into procreate and just draw straight over the top of it okay so just line it up so that it's got kind of maximized on the screen and take a screenshot then whenever you're going to do something like this like the most important thing is just to remember to put a layer on top so it's like putting a piece of tracing paper over the top and then I'm going to draw over the top of it the layer from beneath you just left with your line drawing it's when you map it out like this that you realize quite how much grass to growing area that we've got on our plot but we've tried it in different formulations and we've had this whole run down the center as just one long bed in the past and we ended up going back to raised beds and individually cutting them off just because it seems to work better for us so despite the labor intensive mowing actually Mum and I both quite enjoy mowing and strimming, so that's not a problem. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back in now and put the photograph back underneath this and map out where the trees and the compost bins and the other structures are. OK, 
okay and then we have the basic layout of our plot I've been told quite a few times actually that when I do the walk around with the plot tours that it's quite difficult for people watching to kind of actually visualize the layout of the plot so I'm hoping this is kind of solving that issue and also I'm just going to go through now and as I'm coloring in the various kind of elements on the plot I'm just going to talk through what they are just to make it that much clearer. So I'll start with the shed and the potting bench then we've got the greenhouse and the polytunnel which was new this year. Just while we're on the subject of the polytunnel I did a video about kind of how we went about building ours. It was a bit of a scrap heap challenge, but you might find something useful in it. So I will stick the link above me now. Next up is the pond. I absolutely love the pond. It's one of my favorite features on the plot. I, I spend hours staring into it. And then we've got the hen house up this way, which is where Sappho, Delphi, Fleur and Lua all live. Down here is where I built the cold frame next to the greenhouse. And then this was the netting shed that was a surprise. We were given it by our neighbours who were moving out. So that was a bit marvellous. Down here is where I built the new leaf bin the other day. And I'm just going to block in where the bean arches are and I'll talk about them a bit later. I've got another arch that I haven't constructed yet, which is going to go here, which I'm going to grow the achocha up this year. Okay. Flowers. Flowers are going to be a massive thing on the plot this year. Each year we've been kind of like incrementally increasing the number of flowers that we've got on the plot for a whole load of reasons. Uh, firstly, they are magnificent. And secondly, they've got all sorts of other benefits. They're helping the pollinators and they're encouraging pollinators onto the plot, which is a really good one. They're encouraging the right kind of predators that you want. And you've got companion planting which kind of keeps pests off your plants or is a deterrent. And there's a whole huge range of reasons to have flowers on the plot. But to be perfectly honest, one of my main reasons is just because they are pure joy. We're going for a couple of different kind of, I suppose you call them styles of planting. So we're going to be sticking with the marigolds and the nasturtiums and all of that kind of stuff, which is kind of companion planting type style flowers. And they'll be kind of in the beds. I'm also going to be doing some flowers for cut. Um, I've talked about this before. I find it quite difficult to cut flowers, so I'm going to have to think about them as a crop. So that's something we're doing this year. And we're also going to be expanding the wildflowers. So last year, you've heard me go on about this before, but last year I put over a little section of around the pond and just in front of the polytunnel to uh, wildflower seed mixes. And I was just, basically I was entranced by them and a lot of work didn't get done because I spent so much time watching the flowers but they were so wonderful and we're expanding that like out across that whole area on that side of the allotment but also going to be kind of like under trees and just putting them in where we can so yeah flowers big thing this is where i had the toad flax last year so that was these guys um this was basically what i spent about three months staring at and even just looking at this video just fills me with joy we're going to expand that out this way. So it's going to go all the way up to the polytunnel. And I also I had a lot of Lickness and Rebecca and stuff and Cosmos growing in this area last year. And I've saved masses of seed. So we're going to intersperse with those as well. I also ended up putting in five lavender plants in front of the chicken house. So I'm hoping they're going to take and look fantastic. Then we're just going to be dotting flowers in all over the place. I've got jasmine next to the shed, two big dahlias down the bottom there, and we're going to just dot them in wherever we can and around the bottoms of the fruit trees. This is the bed which I'm mainly going to be using for cut. It's absolutely full of tulips. Uh, these were the ones we had last year. I've got loads more in now. It's, a, it's also planted up with about seven different varieties of dahlia, so we're going to use them for cut. And then all around the bases of the trees, just seeded flowers. Just having a look at the trees we've got on the plot, this is a bay tree, then coming this way we've got the fig and then the apricot. We have got a conference pear up this side and a cherry tree next to that, they're both new this year. 
This is a Cox's Orange Pippin. And then down this way, we've got two other apple varieties that are very small, but we don't know what they are. And this is the mulberry tree. And I don't know if you remember, like this year, the mulberries have been insane. I've, I mean, we always get a lot of fruit off the mulberry tree, but this year was something else. I bored you to tears, I think, with every week on the vlog was more mulberry picking. <laughs> And then we've got areas of the allotment that have sort of permanent stuff in or are places that we know where we're going to grow stuff again that we've grown sort of either last year or the previous years where we just know it's done really well. The top bed here, which is the first one when you walk in, has had the lettuces in it this year. And we do normally grow the lettuces up this end because it's just slightly more shady. It's a bit more protected, whereas the rest of the plot can be a bit of a desert. But this is what they looked like yesterday morning during the plot tour when they look like this. A week ago but everything's really suffered with the cold in this top bed it's incredible but last year we grew peas in this bed and they absolutely loved it because it was just that little bit more protection for them so we're going to be doing that again this year next bed along we had carrots in but we're going to move that off and then we've got the fruit cage up this end as well but I'm going to talk about that on a whole separate video these four beds down here are where I've got the field beans and we're going to be putting the brassicas in them this year because they are nitrogen fixers and brassicas absolutely love nitrogen so that's really what we put them in for. This poor guy looks like he's given up in the cold but that's what we're going to be doing with those beds. This bed has got garlic and the shallots in so that's going to be taken up until like June-ish time. And then these beds down here, this is the established asparagus bed. So this whole patch down here has got about 12 crowns in it and produces really fantastic asparagus. And then we also have a newer asparagus bed that we've only just established a couple of years ago. Now on the bean arches, these are the three double sets that I've got and then the three singles. These guys are where the three varieties of French bean are growing this year and across the doubles which I've got spanning the pathway are going to have the runner beans, the bolotti and the Greek gigantes. And that's sort of the plot basically guys. Okay, so that's kind of my basic plot map done. I know it's uh, pretty scrappy and what I'll probably do is take the dimensions of that one and kind of clean them up so I'll put another layer over the top and actually try and draw it out really nicely because I don't think we're going to have too many changes to the layout of the plot over this coming year. We're going to kind of stick with what we've got. So it's worth me actually putting some time into drawing it out really super neatly but that's not something anybody needs to watch because it's just me like that for like three hours. So this is just my kind of my basic, I hope it gave you some insight into sort of the overall layout of the plot. And um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how I think it's gonna look. I think it's gonna work out really nicely. And I've got high hopes for this year. If this cold ever disappears, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But yeah, it is time for me to go and cook some dinner. So. I'll see you later. Cheers, guys. Mm. What a week. I've never known it to be that cold in London. It's been quite extraordinary. And if you watch the plot tour, you will have seen quite how sad everything is looking up there. Uh, I know broad beans do normally bounce back. Like they, they do, they are kind of drama queens when it gets really cold. They, ooh, and then they come back, but I am doubting some of those really tall ones. They were so beaten by the weather. It was a mixture of that real, real icy cold. I mean, it got down to minus nine. I've never, ever known it to be minus nine in London. That was with wind chill, bearing in mind it was with wind chill, but still, that's extraordinary. So yeah, it remains to be seen what's gonna happen with the broad beans, to be honest. But overall, it was just a weird week because there's only so much you can do in that kind of temperature. You can't go kind of digging anything because the ground is solid and 
I've got a couple of bits and pieces that in that wind, because as well as it being cold, it's been so windy. I had a couple of the uh, white sprouting broccoli, so like the sprouting cauliflower jobbies, um, have kind of lent over, but I can't straighten them up because the ground is frozen. And if I try and straighten them up, obviously it's just going to rip and break the roots off. So I'm waiting for that. So there really wasn't much we could do. So I really hope this week wasn't too boring for you. I really did need to update my plot map and um, I figured I'd take you along with me. So as well as updating that plot map, I was also going through a lot of footage and kind of remembering in my head what we'd grown in what bed last year. And oh, it was just so nice to look at how lush and green everything was in the summer because you forget. I mean, you know it was, obviously you know that it was, but when you can just like look back like that, Oh, it was just so nice spend an hour kind of trawling through um, green lush beds of vegetables really I can't wait so yeah basically I had a bit of a nostalgia for summer while I was doing that but I did achieve some things this week so I've got the plot map done obviously that had needed to be done and also got, got the celery and the celeriac in which uh, obviously I told you I'm running late, but I'm earlier than I thought I was going to be. So mm, 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 kind of win some, lose some. We'll see how that goes. I've put them downstairs in the conservatory because despite it being really cold, actually the conservatory wasn't that bad. And the onions and the spring onions are doing fantastically down there and the leeks. Actually, I should show you, shouldn't I? Yep. So they are all down here under the lemon tree looking good. I love the way leeks and spring onions and things do this with the little with their seed on the top, they're so cute. And then these are the spring onions down here. And this is something I'm really excited about. This is one of my like mini kiwis. It's got aphids on it actually. Bugger, I'll wash them off later. But yeah, so stuff's looking all right out here. Not bad. But yeah, so that's all going just fine. And the good news is the weather is warming up. So this real cold snap is kind of finished now and we're going to be going up into like 14 degrees next week, which I mean, that's a huge leap in one week, isn't it? Talking of next week, the Saturday vlog is going to be so Saturday, the 20th of February, and I'm going to be sowing my tomatoes, which I can't actually I can't adequately express how excited I am about that. I'm not going to sow all of them on the same day. I'm going to sow about half of them. Um, but when I'm doing that, I was just going to combine it with a QA, and a a bit like what I did with the chilies, uh, rather than just kind of recording me sowing tomatoes for 20 minutes. Uh, so if you've got any questions to ask for the Q&A, drop them underneath in the comments or I'll put a community board post out if you want to put any questions on there. And I'll also put something on Instagram in case you're over there as well. But yeah, so any questions, it can be tomato related or not tomato related, whatever, really. I'm incredibly excited about sowing the tomatoes. Incredibly excited, to be honest. Got some real crackers this year. Every year, um, I kind of develop and find new varieties that become on my permanent list. And last year was the first year that I'd grown quite as many varieties as I grew. So I grew 17 varieties last year. I'm not actually growing that many this year. I'm growing about 15. But there's quite a lot of crossover, but about half of them are the same again and half of them are brand new. So that's quite exciting. OK, well, it is actually Valentine's Day today. It's Sunday. So um, I'm just going to do you a massive cheers for Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. It's not a lot going on here, I can tell you. Mm. But still, cheers anyway. You know, when I was doing the plot map just then, there was the clip of mum picking the mulberries. Well, I remembered that we've got a freezer that's like still massively full of soft fruit from the summer, including mulberries. And it's pancake day coming up this week, isn't it? It'd be Tuesday, wouldn't it? Shrove Tuesday. So yeah, I'm going to do pancakes and mulberry compote, which I've got to be honest, pretty excited about. Pretty excited about. Yeah, so that's next week. Um, there's one other thing I have to say, which um, I'm pretty astounded about. Um, so in January, we went over 3000 followers, which was incredible in its own right. And yesterday we went over 6,000. I'm just astounded. So, um, yeah, that's, that's quite incredible. So just a massive cheers to all of you. 
I thought that would be a good reason. That's another reason I'm going to do the Q&A with the tomatoes is because there's so many more people around. Um, yeah, so just basically ask anything and we'll see where we go with that. But yeah, so basically I'm just saying thank you because I think it's amazing. So I'm sorry that it was a strange vlog. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring for you. Next week I'm going to be back outside actually doing stuff rather than just visiting the chickens, I promise. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up anyway. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe. And I will see you on Saturday. Cheers, chaps. Also, I didn't do a cheers last week and it turns out it was a birthday, wasn't it? So this is for you. It's a week late, but cheers anyway.